Sunny Bonani friends. Welcome back to our Andoni vlog series. Last time we saw you, we were talking all about quality of the soil here at Andoni. And as you saw, we are facing some challenges. And William showed you what a clear difference it makes uh, in the plots of spinach where we tried new ways to improve the soil quality and how much bigger the spinach grew um, when we made a few little changes. So today is part two, and we're gonna continue talking about different ways that we can improve the soil here at Mdoni. With me here is uh, these different uh, uh, components of uh, soil structure. Uh, uh, I have a soil, uh, a clump of dead soil here. The soil, the same soil that we are struggling with here in the farm. We have fertilizer here, synthetic fertilizer. We have menu, crawl menu, and we have compost. The challenge that we are facing here in this farm of uh, our soil being dead has been caused by uh, the constant farming of pineapple. Our biggest mind mandate is to bring back the soil into life. So the synthetic fertilizer is uh, something that we are not encouraging and we, 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 we won't be using here in this farm because uh, uh, in as much as it might seem as if it, it, it improves the soil, but it doesn't uh, improve the soil. Actually, uh, it does what we do not want. It, it actually feeds the plant, but our, our priority is to feed the soil and make it very, very healthy so that the soil is the one that is going to take care of the plant. Uh, because that's where a lot of uh, uh, agri agricultural operations have failed. Many people are focusing on, on feeding the plant, whereas uh, we need to take care more of the soil so that the soil can take care of the plant. Uh, the best uh, food for the soil is uh, the organic material from uh, dead tree branches and the dead leaves that falls into the ground and then they decompose into making uh, organic matter. We, we in, in, the, in the traditional farming, way of farming in the communities, we use a lot of uh, cow manure uh, because a lot of sources uh, uh, keep uh, cows as they are animals. The cow manure on its own cannot grow plants. It, it, is, true, it, it is too strong uh, in nitrogen. Uh, many people uh, in the communities they do not uh, they haven't been using a lot of composting much so we want to teach them to do to start doing composting intentionally because that's when they will then start to recycle their waste from tree branches and a lot of uh, debris that is organic they can recycle it into making food for their soil so that they can grow healthy food. Next to the greenhouse here you can see an old row of dead pineapples and this is where um, there's just some leftovers from the previous farmers growing the pineapples and as you can see they, they've they died without the synthetic fertilizers added to them and without watering. So then you get to this section all of a sudden it gets a little green and you might ask what is the difference here? Well a couple months ago the team put uh, some of the dirt that had dead leaves and grass in it and they dumped it here so they could plant this grapevine. It's amazing that just that extra dead grass and dead leaves made this fertile enough for weeds. As you know, weeds are really resilient and they could not even survive in this soil over here. So what a difference a little bit of dead grass makes added to the soil. And then you get here past the grape plant where they've mulched and bam, the weeds are even that much more robust because there's added mulch on top of that healthier soil. So this soil doesn't even have compost added yet. So you can imagine how much benefit uh, each layer of additional 
compost and leaves and mulch is making for all of the plants here. You might remember in the first vlogs that we did uh, that we, we planted beans and uh, there is uh, also another vlog that shows us uh, harvesting uh, those beans. So those uh, uh, chaff and waste from harvesting the beans is uh, the mulch that we are now using uh, to mulch all, all our plots and all our trees. So you can see the cycle now is starting to, uh, to take shape because uh, the plant is from the same ground that we, 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 we have here. It grows and then it dies. When it dies, it goes back into the soil that we have here. It is, it, it is continuing to enrich the soil here. So we do not just throw away or burn this chaff, uh, but it, it, it tends into to feed the soil more and to make it to be more resilient and uh, sustainable for all the plants that we are growing here. So on the side of the farm, the team started a compost bin two months ago when we had too much old spinach. And in the permaculture way, what you do is you create as many compost piles as you need where you need them. You don't just have one central location. So actually this is really wise. It makes a lot of sense because you have compost right where your waste is and it's ready um, where you need it when it's done composting. When they first put this um, pile together, the spinach was almost at the top here and they layered it with dead leaves and other debris um, from doing the landscaping. So as you can see, it has sunk down quite a bit as it's composted successfully. So to turn the compost, what they do is they create a new pile and they just shovel it into the new pile and it effectively turns the compost for them. Zama is showing us here now some of this compost. Um, you can see the gray green spots on all the leaves. They call them native microbes and that's what's helping to actively decompose this pile. It's pretty neat to see the, the mechanism. So the guys were just explaining to me that this stick they've stuck in the middle here, uh, they jokingly call it their thermometer, but it actually really is their thermometer because they can take the stick out sometimes to see how hot the center is. And also when the stick, the bottom of the stick it turns black, they know that um, all the other organic matter around it is also composting. So this is a, a pile of potting soil that we, we recently made. We made it here so that it's closer to the nursery uh, so that whenever we want to propagate a tree and put it in a pot, in a pot, you can just come here easily and just pot. So uh, this uh, is a mix that we made out of sand, one part of sand, one part of compost, and one part of menu so sometimes we alternate that uh, if we need to keep the, the pots longer for instance if we want to to plant uh, uh, pots that will stay in inside the house for a long time we can add more menu in that uh, mix so we we put the, sa the sand so that it makes the, the pot to drain easily and also so that it uh, there is aeration in the root structure of the plants. Uh, we also put the menu obviously for the nutrients of the plants and also the compost, the same thing. We also want to add organic matter into our mix. As you can see, there are a lot of different ways that we can try to improve the soil quality here from composting to mulching to worms. We are doing everything we can to see what works here. And our interns are learning all of these techniques and they're gonna take these techniques back to their communities and uh, see what works in their own homesteads. And we can't wait to see the results that we all get as we keep trying to improve things. So thank you so much for watching. In case you didn't see part one of this vlog on soil, uh, we'll put the link down in the description box below. Until next time, Solana Gothley.